John, how are you doing? Good, John. How are you doing? Good, good. Um, I'm sure it, it's been challenging, but but what have the past, I guess, 48 hours since the end of the game been like emotionally for you? Uh, yeah, probably like you'd expect. Um, you know, I've hurt and listen, I'm human, like the rest of our staff is human and everybody out there. And it's, it's, uh, it's been tough. Um, you know, when you look at, and it's been disappointing, um, in particular those, <clears throat> the last part of the game, you know, uh, and it's an area, those 13 seconds in particular that, you know, we pride ourselves in being detailed and prepared and that's an area of situational football is that we practice uh, almost daily here. And um, we typically handle very well. And, um, but it is, it's something that we, we all have to face. We're not gonna run from it um, and learn from it. And hopefully one day, uh, as we look back, uh, one day it'll be a part of our story. and. Um, you know, we'll be accomplishing the goals that we have as an organization. Um, and that'll be a, a part of our story. And uh, somewhere along the lines, that'll, that'll help us. And right now it's hard. Um, um, but I'm extremely proud of this team. I'm extremely proud of what we've, we have accomplished and, and what we've done. And um, uh, I believe that uh, we're going to face, face it and learn from it. You mentioned the 13 seconds. I know fans, everyone in your building ha has probably gone through the scenarios a million times since. From a, I guess, revisionist standpoint, are there things that, that you wish you did differently? Yeah, our execution, I wish was different. Just like Thanks, I said Sean. after the game, John, I wish, I wish our execution was different. Thanks, Sean. I, I appreciate you all year, man. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, appreciate you. Hey, Sean, good to see you. Um, I just want to ask you about, you know, big picture things. Um, yesterday, Josh had talked about if Brian Dable were to leave for a head coaching job, you know, he said something to, I'm paraphrasing, but something to the, the extent of like, he, he liked to have a say in who replaces him, but at the same time acknowledges that it's not his decision. Um, and then spoke very highly of Ken Dorsey. How much do you weigh Josh's opinion and input when making those decisions if it were to come down to that and Dable were to leave? Yeah, um, yeah Josh, Josh uh, and I communicate on a lot of things. Um, you know, we spoke yesterday about some of what you're discussing here, Heather, and um, he will be in the loop and he will be communicated with and uh, certainly value Josh's opinion on things. And, and it's important that he's comfortable uh, as well. So um, no, no decision will be made uh, without Josh uh, being looped in. And then just, um, you know, looking at Josh and it seems like every year when we have these end of the season zoom calls or press conferences with you, the topic of, you know, Josh's development comes up and, and what does he need to do to take that next step? But looking at this season, I mean, what more is there for him to do? And I guess just what did he show to you this year after everything that that he was able to accomplish yeah tremendous uh, another step in his growth right this year uh or several steps i should say um uh, you know there were some i'm sure questions remaining for people and i think that he's answered all of those questions in my mind he has at least and um you know you're always looking as an organization to find a quarterback that you say hey you've got him you know, and he can do it and uh, uh, take your team to the highest, highest level. And I, and, and I believe uh, without a shadow of a doubt, Josh Allen has ans answered all of those questions. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate you all season and uh, yeah. enjoy the off season. Thank you. Thanks. Same Heather. Hey, Sean, as you begin to reflect on this season, what were some promising areas in your mind and how do you think the team can build off, off those as they head into the off season? Yeah, a lot of positives, Maddie, a lot of positives. And, you know, we've come a long way as an organization. I'm super proud of what we, uh, not just uh, the players on the field, the coaches on the field, but we as an entire organization have accomplished um, off the field, on the field, 
uh, on the field, obviously, you know, the, the, um, the results are what they've been. It's two, two AFC East back-to-back, you know, division championships and, and uh, uh, you know, three 10-win seasons in a row, four out of the five years in the playoffs. I mean, those are all the things that we've seen on the field, but so much more uh, in addition to that has happened off the field with, um, I know what we've done in the community and, and where we're going as an organization, the direction of the organization, and uh, our fans have done a tremendous job of sticking with us, and we certainly appreciate their support. Um, seeing so many fans turn turn out with us for us at the airport the other night, uh, or the other morning, I should say, was tremendous. And this is a unique place, and uh, I'm proud to say I'm a part of it. And um, you know, Buffalo is is a winning organization, and I'm glad to say it's back uh, in that in that realm again. And the offense finished the season on fire, especially in the playoffs with the points that they were putting up. So what are some of the conversations you had with some of the guys on offense about how they can almost bottle that up and, and take it into the off season and then bring it back for next year, just with, with how successful they were towards the end of the season. Yeah. And I believe a lot of it went through Josh, Maddie, as, as was asked earlier from Heather. I mean, um, his leadership, uh, his day-to-day approach, um, his maturation off the field, just in terms of his leadership and his influence on this football team. And um, as you saw, um, Josh was um, playing at an elite level down the stretch in particular on a consistent basis as well. And so um, that'll be important for us and for our offense uh, and the entire group of our offense moving forward next season. Thanks, Sean. Enjoy the off season. Thanks, Matt. Good morning, Sean. Uh, John Wall here. <laughs> Hi, John. John, yeah, how you doing? Um, how you doing? Um, is there anything, I mean, as, as much as this, this, this hurts the team and, you know, yourself and the players, is there anything that you can take out of, you know, being part of a game that's going, that's already being considered one of the most compelling in NFL history? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, when you're a good football team and you're a winning organization, you're around games like that. Um, you know, <clears throat> it just depends on how many each year you're going to be around or in and, um, you obviously want to win those 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 uh, tug of wars, if you will, right? Um, so we're disappointed for that, and it, and it hurts, and it's it's going to hurt for some time, and it'll be something I never forget. Um, but again, I think if we all face it the right way and we carry it with us and learn from it, like this will be part of our story, and we'll eventually get to where we're trying to get to as a, as an organization, what our ultimate goal is, and that's why we're here. And uh, I want that for our fans and we're going to continue to work tirelessly to accomplish that. Um, so that's going to remain unchanged. And, um, you know, but I'm super proud of being in games like that. We were toe to toe with the defending AFC champ two years running now, and they got a really good football team. They're well coached. They have good players. Um, and so, but we're right there and uh, you know, we'll see what comes out this weekend in the AFC championship game. Um, so but I, you know, look where we were a year ago against Kansas City and look where we were this year. And um, that's a little bit of a measuring stick. But at the end of the day, we want to win those games and, and we expect to win those games. On the, on the flip side, <laughs> one, one of the themes of this season and, and maybe a, uh, you know, the, the issues that you had was, was pulling out one score, was, was being on the losing end of one score games. Can you pinpoint what kind of flip there because you were six and one last year and zero and six this year. And that has to, yeah, I mean, I'm just not sure what, what that points to. Well, I think it points to, to, you know, you look at, you got to take each one of those games separately, John, and look at um, where we were at the end of the game. Right. And, you know, without being too specific here, just say, Hey, why didn't we get the result we were looking for? Uh, did we have a chance to win the game at the end of the game? And what side of the ball was that? You know, so you just look at it. That's why you can't group them all together, right? But at the end of the day, um, you want to make sure you have your detail and your, and which leads to great execution uh, at the critical moments of those games. And, uh, and so I thought we got better through the season with that as we went. And then, <clears throat> and then we had a chance this past weekend and, and we weren't as detailed or as, and we didn't execute as well as we needed to. Thanks, Sean. I hope you get a chance to enjoy your off season. Thanks, John. Same to you. Hey, Sean, Adam Benini. Hi, Adam. Hi. Um, when we talked the other night, 
you know, you didn't want to get into detail and, and after, especially right on the heels of such an emotional game like that. I think most of us get that. Uh, but now a couple of days removed from it. Um, and this is a big question, you know, for those who follow this team in, in the league. Can you talk specifically about the decision to kick away there with 13 seconds left? Yeah, I'm still not going to get into the specifics on it, uh, Adam. Again, it comes down to execution. Uh, we didn't execute. Um, and so I hope, I hope, I hope you, you can appreciate where I'm coming from on that. Um, that's, that's really where I was after the game. That's where I am now. Um, and as I said earlier, um, disappointing, Adam, because uh, we pride ourselves in detail. We pride ourselves in execution. Um, and being great in situational football, we practice that uh, tirelessly here. I mean, nonstop, as you're aware, you're, you see our practices, you know how, how um, detailed we try and be and meticulous with our preparation. And, um, and so that's, that's, it's, it's disappointing overall to get that result, but it's even more disappointing knowing that we prepare and practice those situations uh, a ton here in Buffalo. And um, it's where I come back to, you got to face it and we're not going to run from it, Adam. And, uh, you know, I, I believe in that. I believe in that approach. We all have to, we all have to face it and, uh, and then learn from it. And uh, I believe that we're heading in the right direction as an organization. And I believe we will definitely accomplish our goal the ultimate goal we have, and that'll be a part of the reason why, as long as we face it, and that's what we need to do right now. Can I assume that 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 answer applies to how you played, how the team played defense on that on that last drive in regulation too? Yes. Okay, so I won't follow up on that, but I, I will just ask you lastly this then: um, was there was it a miscommunication internally within the staff, or was it a clear a clear decision? We are kicking away. We're going to go with a touchback here. Yeah, uh, and I'm not going to get into the, the specifics and the details on that. Again, I appreciate and respect where you're coming from. I hope you can appreciate and respect where I'm coming from. Um, I'm not going to get into the, into the weeds on that. I'm just going to leave it at the execution piece. Okay, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Sean. Um, in terms of the execution, you know, going back and watching the last 13 seconds, you guys call timeout before both defensive plays. Did you feel like the players had – a good idea of what you needed them to do on those two plays, especially since you did call the timeouts? Yeah, I like the fact that we had those timeouts. I think you know, when you had timeouts towards the end of the half, end of the game, you're doing something right operationally there. And that's where we're, we're usually pretty good. We're not, you know, we're not playing sloppy football and burning excess timeouts. So we had those. And, you know, I let them line up the first play to see formationally, burn the timeout, the first one. Um, there were some conversations that took place on the sideline. Um, you know, that first play, you know, with number 10 in particular, you're, you're so fast getting down the field. So you've got to be smart with that, balancing that a little bit with also challenging the, the yardage that they needed for the field goal. And then the second play, uh, burn, let them line up again. Uh, so we, so I could give us the information we needed and uh, at least by looking at their formation and how they're going to attack us there and, and use that second timeout or last timeout uh, that we had. And, and um, so, listen, at the end of the day, uh, obviously, we didn't, get, we didn't get the job done there. You mentioned liking where things are at with what you guys have accomplished. And you're on to something, I think, because the 80, early 90s Bills, I mean, they had a similar arc. Um, it's, been, it's happened before where you take painful losses and, and move forward. But with the way that you guys built this thing in the off season to prepare for this chiefs team specifically, does it feel like a bit of a, you know, a tough pill? I mean, it's obviously a tough pill to swallow, but to have it end against this team again, with the way you prepare things, what does that say as, as you sit here today, going into another off season? Yeah, certainly disappointed, Matt, um, no doubt about it. Yeah. But just one, one off season doesn't, doesn't necessarily can expect that to change it like that. So, you know, they've been at it. Andy's been at it there at the Chiefs for a number of years. Um, their roster has been being built for a number of years. So, you know, we've got to continue to do it. We've got to continue to stay hungry and work our tails off and prepare 
and um, handle things uh, the right way. And, uh, and I'm confident in who we are in the direction of this organization and the people that we have uh, that will eventually, will eventually get to where we're trying to get to. Um, so that's what winners do. And this, this is a winning organization. Thanks, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean, it's Sal. Thanks for joining us today. Sure. Um, so, you know, fans obviously very disappointed. They, they, they can go on with their lives. This isn't what they do every day for a living. This is your livelihood. Um, you know, they'll, they'll recover, go to their jobs, things like that. How do you as a professional have to compartmentalize to do that? I asked Harrison Phillips kind of the same question yesterday. And he said, you know, these are the kinds of things that, you know, because it is your livelihood, like people, they could go into a really bad place, you know, mentally, depression, things like that. You have to be able to, you know, pick yourself up. So how, how do you do that? And how do you send that message to your players to do that? Well, that's part of the job. Um, that's part of what we sign up for. And whether you're on the field as a player, or coach, uh, the closer you, you are to it, the more things like this come up. And even, you know, the highest of the highs, the week before, you know, we have a chance to play a division rival here and, and we have that, but you also have to handle that the right way also. So I think there's a mental component that comes with, with the job that you've got to be able to stay consistent and, and mentally tough, to be quite honest with, with, with you on that. Um, um, but this, this is what we're cut out for. This is what we do. And, and this will be part of the story and, and you've got to use this as strength to, to move you forward and to drive you even harder towards the goal that we have. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not being shy about that. I'm not beating around the bush. That's, it's the truth. And, uh, there's a lot of people that have been through a lot of teams that have been through moments like this. And eventually they come out on the other end because they're not, you know, they don't cower from it or because of it, they, they, they help it to make them stronger and, and, uh, and drive them harder towards the goal. Thanks. Can, can you just tell us what the next couple of days or weeks will be like as far as exit interviews, coaches, evaluation, like what is on your plate and what you have to do? Yeah. So we just finished with the players yesterday and their exit meetings and, and physicals and whatnot. And, uh, and then I'm meeting with you obviously almost first thing this morning and, uh, Brandon and I will continue to talk through the day and evaluate our team um, and, and move on from there. Thanks, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean, uh, Josh Reed here. Um, but my question is about um, the overtime. Um, you have three timeouts there. Uh, you know, the, the Chiefs had obviously gotten things going and they're moving the ball. At any point, did you think about maybe taking one of those timeouts just to kind of give the defense a little bit of a, you know, a chance to catch their breath, especially coming off of what happened the last 13 seconds and the ball was kind of rolling downhill against them there? Yeah, sure, sure did, Josh. And we talked about that. And um, you know, I thought about it in my mind and, you know, just go back and forth on on that and go back and forth on how, how critical timeouts are as well. And, and so... Yeah, definitely thought about that. Yeah, uh, one last question for you. Tredavious White, obviously, it sure would have been nice to have him, I'm sure, uh, out there. Have you talked to him at all? What's kind of an update there on his rehab and everything? And, you know, sure, fingers crossed, what's maybe the timeline of hopes into getting him back next season, like timeline-wise? Yeah, he's, I see him every day just about, Josh. He's in, in the building working his tail off uh, with our training staff and, and as is Zimmer in here as well. And, and Justin's done a great job. And so those two are working their, their butts off to get back. And I just love watching them. I, I hate seeing, seeing them in that position, um, but their determination, um, their guts, their grit, man, is, is on display every day. And um, it's not an easy process, the pain they're going through to get back. Um, so I just really appreciate them, the sacrifices they, they've made. Any timeline though, or that you can give us as far as the hopes of now? Okay. No, I, nothing. Right. No, I mean, it looks like both from what I'm hearing are on schedule and as is Ike Bucker as well. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for everything this season. I appreciate right. it. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Sean. Uh, thanks uh, again for your patience all season long. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, so, uh, you know, just since this is our last time here uh, to go last day to go over this, 
uh, the strategy on first down with 13 seconds left? Did if yeah, obviously if you try to execute everyone putting hands on receivers to take a five yard penalty, if someone fails to get hands on Tyreek Hill, uh, that potentially is a longer you <laughs> a problem too. So was that part of uh, uh, was that thought about uh, and or discussed? It was, uh, it was thought about, I can promise you that. And, and there's, there's give and take to everything, you know? Um, so uh, obviously everything in this job, there's things that are questioned, especially when you don't get the result you're looking for. Um, but yeah, there's, <clears throat> you know, there's certainly something that we could have done right there. Mark, to your point on, you know, you asked me that after the game about taking a five-yard penalty. So um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't disagree with, with that thought, at least uh, as being, as being uh, one of the options. And then bigger picture, uh, at various a couple points in midseason, after Jacksonville, after Indianapolis, you know, you expressed, "Hey, look, we can't live being utterly one-dimensional. We need the running game to be a piece of the puzzle." Um, just was there a point, maybe, like a, you know, the the Thanksgiving Day game? You know, you run it thirty-two times. The Tampa game, it really started to kick in. Uh, was there a point where you and uh, Brian said, "You know, damn it." We are committing to this come hell or high water, you know, uh, and what do you think about the way you got results sticking with it? Yeah, uh, again, not going to get into, into the details on it, on the mark. I, you've heard my message all season long about the, the health, the healthiness of an offense and being the threat of being two dimensional. Um, and I firmly believe in that um, you saw uh, the results to your point of when we were, when we were really rolling. Uh, we had a, a good, I don't want to say balance, I don't like using that word, but a good uh, ebb and flow, right, of just, of just the run and pass and the action game and, and some of those things as well. And so I think that, you know, that helps the offensive line when you can do both. Um, it helps certainly Josh when I say helps the offensive line. Um, it's, you know, it's a lot easier to rush the passer when you know where to find a quarterback, right? And, and so when you can make, uh, make yourself a two-dimensional threat, seems to slow people down um and uh, and i think that's when when offenses are at their best when they can do that and then lastly for me just you know obviously uh pass rush getting more and, and defensive line depth was a huge point of emphasis going into the season just uh what uh encourages you about uh what you saw from the pass rush and the depth on the defensive line yeah all season long uh, you know we had some depth that we could that we could pull from which was important. That's a position that tends to get banged up, uh, very similar to the skill positions in, in a different way, albeit. Um, but that being said, I, I was, it was nice to have some of the depth. What we've really got to do is, is, in, is develop some of those young players um, um, so that, you know, we can continue to affect the quarterback. And, and uh, that'll be a goal of ours and continue to be a goal. It's just, you know, the game is, is, uh, the importance of, of how well you play up front on both sides of the ball is, is critical to your team's success. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Coach, uh, you already mentioned how the Chiefs have been the measuring stick. I know your defense prides itself on being sound fundamentally, but the elite speed of the Chiefs offense seems to compromise even the best fundamentally sound teams. I know evaluations are just beginning, but how much do you need to prioritize matching that speed with new additions you might have to make defensively this offseason? Well, I think that's a valid point, Chris. And, um, you know, that team speed is unique uh, with, with obviously Tyreek Hill and, and, you know, 17 and 13. I mean, they've got, they've got a lot of guys that can fly and it does impact the game. It impacts strategy and it, it, it impacts game planning. And then on the field, as, as you saw, it, it impacts the result, right? And so um, it's unique, the this, this speed that they have. So, and, and, you know, again, giving them credit, they've done a lot of things well. They've had uh, quite some time to build that up. And um, so credit goes to them. You know, we're going to continue to build, build this as well. And uh, we're going to continue to address areas of need and and I think not just this year, but evolving with how the game continues to evolve, that we have to continue to evolve with it and try and be out in front of it all the time. Um, so that's, 
that's what we have to do. One of the areas, you know, that we have to continue to look at matching, matching uh, team speed uh, on both sides of the ball. Thanks coach. Sure. Hey, Sean, um, it's increasingly rare for uh, teams to go year after year to, to have as much camaraderie with their starting lineup as, as you guys did um, with basically bringing back the whole band for a, a two-year roster. Does this almost make it more difficult to swallow the way you guys went out? No, it's always hard, Joe. Um, when you compete like we do, right, you saw us compete the other night, I believe. Um, those guys competed their, their tails off, man. We as coaches competed like crazy. I mean, uh, we obviously didn't get the result we are looking for. Um, every year is a new year, right? And so um, whether you have a ton of guys back or you don't have – every every team's a new team. Even when you have players back, that does not necessarily mean that you're guaranteed a certain level of success. Um, so um, there's there's challenges that come with that also when you have everyone back. And I think we did a heck of a job of steering through that this year, through the course of the season. Um, and i um, super proud of the way the guys fought through that, learned a lot through it. And because a lot of teams um, would go like this and, and we, and we rose to the occasion and we fought through that and, and uh, got to where we got to. So super proud of the way the guys handled that. And um for you personally, I know when you first got into the, the head coaching chair, um, you valued experience in terms of coordinators, all the coaches you put around you. Are you at the point now to where um, you're willing, as some of your coordinators might graduate to um, head coaching positions, are you at the point now where you're willing to give some of your younger staff more of a chance the way that uh, other coaches uh, took a chance on you and, and some of your colleagues around the league? Yeah, sure. I mean, you want to be able to promote from within. Um, just like in any business, that's, that's where you get your return on investment. Um, that's where you, um, try and foster morale and, and, uh, and camaraderie again. And, and, uh, and in, again, and just continue to invest in, in the people we have in our building. And, um, there's two sides to that, right? You, so they've got to, they've got to show you that they have what it takes and they're putting in the time. And then you, you'd love to be able to do that, uh, in every situation. So we try and do that as much as we can. Do you feel like you have the potential on your staff right now for, for doing that? Yeah, you know, I, I think generally speaking, we do. Yeah, I've been very pleased with our staff and, and uh, we've got a good group. All right, thanks, Sean. Have a good off season. Hey, Sean. Um, first, I was curious, obviously you mentioned the guys who are on IR, but are there any injuries coming off the game or surgeries that are happening after the season that you can share? Yeah, I'm not gonna get into all that right now, Elaine. I mean, there's, we've got some guys that are typically, you know, every year you come into the off season, typically you have a group of guys that are going to get off season surgeries. At this point, I can tell you, I don't think any of them will be, you know, of the major category um, other than the ones we have with Trey and Justin and, and Ike that have already gone through their surgeries. So um, fairly, I think we're in fairly good shape as much as I can tell you right now. And then this is a larger scale question, I guess, but, you know, Josh and Dawson made a point of mentioning to us yesterday that, and it's come up a lot this season, the second half of that Tampa game, how that really, especially on the offensive side, got things going and how they really felt like they, they went from there, the energy was up, all that sort of stuff. How do you, looking at the season as a whole now, get that started sooner? Like, why did it take until the second half of the Tampa game for that group to really get going? Or what kind of spurred that that you can learn from next year? Well, as I said before, in Joe's situation, you know, Joe talked about the continuity that we had. I think sometimes that's good. And sometimes, you know, there's, there's things that come up through that continuity that work against you. And so super proud of the way that we figure that out. Um, a lot of teams aren't able to do that and their season ends, you know, at the end of the regular season. So it takes leadership. It takes uh, sometimes tough conversations and it takes the truth. Um, and I'm super proud of the way that as a team, not just the offense as well, but as a team, defense included and special teams, we were able to figure that piece out and and uh, get us to where we got to. And then one last one for me, and I know you've talked a lot about the 13 seconds, overtime, all of that, but how many times do you watch that end of game back? Like how many times do you let yourself go over that? And obviously it was th that end of game with the scoring back and forth. It, it was, you know, a historic thing. It's never happened quite like that. What can you learn from that overall as a coach? 
uh, <laughs> where do you want to start? Um, I mean, I watched it, I watched it uh, on video and I watched it over and over in my head uh, a million times uh, and in my stomach a million more. Um, that's what we do. Um, as was mentioned earlier, it's my livelihood. And, um, you know, I'm super competitive as well. And I want the best for, for, our, for our football team in this organization and our fans, quite honestly. So um, I'll continue to watch it in my mind and in my gut for, for years. And, um, you know, it's something that I'm going to, uh, but when we get to where we're, where we're trying to get to, um, I believe that that'll be, that'll make it that much more um, enjoyable in, those mo in that moment. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Sean, hey, it's Thad Brown. You hear me okay? Yeah, I got you, Thad. Go ahead. Um, I, I certainly understand when respect what you talk about with the way that you guys went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the two-time champs and that the way you played the Chiefs this year was better than last year. But is there a concern going into the offseason with the mantra being, you know, we're fine, things we're doing are, are, are okay, when that direction is yet to get you where you want to go? Yeah, and I don't want to give – I'm not trying to give off that impression we're fine, we're, you know – that's not it at all. I, and I think, you know, me Thad. like, um, I'm not one to sit around and, and, and use that as, Hey, we're fine. Are we going in the right direction? I believe we are. And I think that's important. We have momentum and we have movement. We have improvement. Um, you know, who knows where, you know, the Kansas city Cincinnati game will go. So I don't, I mean, at the end of the day, we're trying to get to and play in and win the world championship, just like every team in the league is. Um, but I'm not giving off, I right? make sure I'm not giving off this impression of we're fine. No, that's not it. Um, if you saw that plane ride on the way home, you would not come away with the impression that we're fine. Um, I think everyone is set and, and of the single minded focus to improve, um, starting with me and committed to, to one, to accomplishing one goal. And um, now, I mean, we're, we're going to be human here and try and get a little bit of rest from this long haul of the season that we were just in um, and get back on it. And, and uh, so that's, you know, that'll be led by Brandon and myself and trying to get us to where we're trying to go um, as quickly as we can. And uh, we're going to work tirelessly to do that. <clears throat> go about it the right way and uh, and again continue to try and develop and improve what we're doing here and then a totally separate topic have you had any conversations with brian or leslie about the availability of your other assistants on your staff should they get a head coaching job somewhere else and you know whether or not they would be able to hire any of those guys yeah we've had conversations i'm not going to get get into the detail on those conversations but yes we've had conversations all right, Sean, I'd like uh, to echo what everybody else said. Thanks very much for your time all year and especially today. All right, thanks, Dad. You too. Hey, Sean, it's Kim Jones. Can you hear me okay? Yep, I got you, Kim. Thanks. I have, I have two. The second one's a short one, I promise. Um, in, a, in an NFL world where this offseason is probably going to include a lot of quarterback movings uh, and, and trades perhaps and, and everything else, how much peace of mind do you have that you have your quarterback for the foreseeable future and that you happen to love the guy. Yeah, um, I do love the guy, Kim. I'll start there. Um, and, you know, uh, he, as I said earlier, there was a question about Josh earlier, Kim. Um, not sure if you heard it, but just about mm -hmm. the questions maybe. Yep. And now he's answered, he's answered all those questions, right? right? So, um, and, and I'm extremely proud of it of what he's been able to do this past season and um, just his growth over the years. And, and just because you have the guy on one hand doesn't mean that you're going to get there. Right. But having that guy is hard to find, right. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of GMs, a lot of teams that search high and low for that quote unquote, that guy. And, you know, I believe without a shadow of a doubt, we have that, that player and that person. So that's good to know. And now we have to continue to move strategically around him to further our team moving forward. In a letter of the law postseason where Tom Brady was called for unsportsmanlike conduct for 
an exchange with with the referee. Should Tyreek Hill have been flagged for taunting with that peace sign? I'm not going to I'm not going to get into it, Kim. I, I appreciate you asking that. You're very observant, uh, but I'm not going any further. OK, I appreciate you, Sean, very, very much all season. Thank you so much. Likewise. Yeah, thanks, Kim. Hi, Sean, it's Jay with the Buffalo News. Thanks for your time today. Um, the guys on defense, understandably, were really proud uh, of where they finished, number one, yards allowed, number one against uh, points. But given the way that this season ended, uh, you know, you go back to maybe the Tampa game and then the Chiefs game against elite quarterbacks. Do you feel like the perception of that defense is going to be altered, maybe a great deal, by their performance in those games against the elite quarterbacks in this league? Yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, I can't handle, I don't control perception and neither do they, Jay. And I think the important piece is um, that we see, you know, the season that they had and, and the contributions that they made to helping us get to where we got to. They were very consistent. If you look, if you track it all season long through the, from, from the start of the season, through the, through, through up until the end, until that last game, and I agree with you in the direction you're trying to go on that is we didn't play well enough defensively in the last, in the last game. Um, and so, you know, all of that falls on me and um, that's an area we have to assess uh, with a very critical eye um, for our off seat in our off season as we move forward and try and improve as a team. Okay. And then lastly, for me last year, uh, when we spoke to you at this time and to Brandon as well, there was a very clear theme in terms of the priority and free agency was to keep as many of your guys together as you could. You were able to do that when you think about Matt and Daryl and, and the guys that you brought back. Uh, do you believe that that was the right uh, direction for the organization? And will that again be the plan uh, heading into this offseason to keep as many of your guys together? Or do you look at the results, uh, both in the regular season and, and where you made it to in the playoffs and say, we may need to look outside the organization to take this roster to the next level? Well, I think you always, I, I don't think you can say, you know, based on this individual, you know, that if you just have to look at it all, you can't say just generally speaking, Hey, we're just going to do this. Right. And, and we just have to beat this team. I don't think that's a healthy approach. I think you got to take a step back, reset and really be calculated about our next moves. Right. And to say, this is the only way to do it, I think is uh, nearsighted and, and not um, really taking a holistic view on how to get this done. Um, it's not easy. And I think the best way to go about it is to be strategic, take our time and review each situation on its own, right? Because every, every individual situation is different. Um, as you're talking about each player and continuity and then looking inside versus looking outside, we're going to look at everything to improve our football team inside and outside. Um, and that's, that's what you have to do. Even if we were to had, had, even if we were to have accomplished our our goal of winning the world championship this year, you, you need to do it the same way. And so, um, you know, just bringing back your own players or just looking outside, I don't think is the best way to approach um, any season, um, and, and especially this after this season and, and where we're trying to go as a team moving forward. Thanks, Sean. I really appreciate your time all season, and uh, get some rest. All right. Thanks, Jay. You too. Thanks.